presence of the speakers which is being read is not only written by themselves, uh, not to impress upon the audience, but if you are married, you know who to impress upon. And after about 14 years of successful marriage, my, my wife still believes I'm just another ordinary guy. She asked me, I said, I'm going to speak in a TED event. And she looked at it, uh, what TED? Are you serious? I said, yeah, I'm going to speak in a TED event. And she said, uh, TED is all about ideas. They only call you intellectuals. How are they calling you for this program? <laughs> it's only how many schools and colleges which calls you for a, for, for a lecture. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute honor to be here uh, to share my thoughts on this particular topic and two minutes make a difference. The only correction with what the MC said is I still work with Infosys because Infosys gives me bread and butter. I'm an HR business leader with Infosys. And I'm a founder and managing trustee of a small foundation called Matram, Matram and Tamil Beach Change. And um, that's what we do. And, and this story is all about, I'm just sharing two, three stories from my foundation. I'm basically a storyteller by profession. And you know, HR professionals are always good storytellers. Uh, we are about four years into existence and a lot of people come and ask me, was NGO, starting an NGO, uh, a dream for you? Were you really born like this? Yeah, from, a, from a childhood, were you really compassionate and all this stuff? Because that's what normally people say when you're fairly successful. You say, you know, I was mean, fairly down with itself, I know that I'm going to be like this. I'm not going to give you any such stories. I have no idea about starting an NGO. I did not want to start an NGO. It was not even in, in one of the wildest dreams. All I knew was I was fairly good in HR. I was heading HR for a large IT corporation. And at the same time, I was very, very passionate about public speaking. And my life is like this. Monday to Friday, I work with emphasis. Friday evening, I start out for my lectures. I go and speak in some nooks and corners of Tamil Nadu to some corporation school kids, to college students on things that I am very passionate about and what I want youngsters to follow. And so I thought I was fairly decent in public speaking because you keep doing this over and over again. And there was this large career counseling event. I'm associated with the Tamil Daily where we go and uh, do this career counseling event starting April 1st. Because if you're a student in Tamil Nadu, you can only given two choices. Either you have to become a doctor or an engineer. And uh, even if you want to be a chartered accountant, first they say you become an engineer, then, then you decide what you want to do in life. So career counseling in Tamil Nadu happens in large halls and I just finished my session and after I finished my session normally students and parents will come around and ask you a lot of questions. They would have made up their mind, they want to do electrical and communication engineering but they come and they want to hear it from your mouth, right? EC, good score for supply, good score. Uh, civil, no, no, sir, but civil is okay but still EC is good scores, right? Yeah, I, as, as long as you get, they hear it from your, from your side, they are very happy. So the editor of this daily walked up to me and he said, um, so there is this small kid who is standing outside the hall, refusing to come inside and she just wants to have a word with you. She's in a hurry, she wants to leave. And I, I found that uh, a little strange that somebody wants to meet me but for refusing to come inside the hall. So I stepped out of the hall and I saw a small girl, very thinly built, uh, not more than 7th or 8th standard. Uh, she is wearing a salwar kameez which none of you girls will ever dream of wearing it even as a night dress. Okay? It, was, it was literally in rags. She was holding a notebook by her chest and standing by the wall. And when I went to her, she asked me in this beautiful Madurai Tamil, Anna Vanakane, Padichone and Gurvala Kadino, Admaru Padichone. Okay? She said, uh, I want to get a job. Suggest me a course that once I finish this course, I should get a job. And she didn't introduce herself, nothing. So I asked her, um, okay, tell me what do you do? What kind of course do you want to do? She says, any course. I'm basically good in study, any course, but the only condition is I need to get a job immediately after this course is done. So upon inquiry, I found out that uh, her mother passed away three, four years back. She had two siblings. Father is an alcoholic. And uh, she says, um, that's my family. And I said, who's educating you? She said, I work and I also support my family. I said, what kind of work do you do? She said, I work as a domestic maid in four houses, two houses in the morning, two houses in the evening. She cooks for the siblings and then she goes to school, uh, studies and uh, has given a 12th board exam. So results were awaited. So I asked her, uh, because in Tamil Nadu everything revolves around marks, because we are the only state where sooner or later kids will score 1,202 out of 1,200. Two marks from 100 is also possible. And still have mathematics areas in their engineering exam. Because A plus B the whole square is equal to A square plus B square plus 2AB. Why? That I don't know. It's a formula. We have to buy hearted. Okay? So just like how we buy hearted, we also buy hearted mathematics formula. 
So when I asked her how much have you scored in your 12th standard, she said that my board exam results are yet to come, but in all the revisions, the revision exams, three revision exams that I have given, I have not scored anything less than 1,150 out of 1,200. Now that was like a tight slap on my face. Now because I need to multiply my 12th standard marks by 2 to get that kind of a score, 1,150. And when normally somebody comes and asks you for help, what do you do? You pull out the wallet, give some money. That's what most of us do, right? We, we, we pull out the wallet, give 100, 200, 300, whatever money. Most of you would have done it, I have done it. But that day, something told me, giving her money is not going to help her. And not in the wildest dreams, I, I want to help her, but I didn't know what to do. Just a leap of faith, I pulled out my business card, and I gave her the business card, and I said, once you get your results, just call me. Let me see what else can I can do for you. And she was in a hurry to leave and I saw her patted on her shoulder and showed her shoulder and asked her why are you in a hurry to leave? She said, Anne, now I'm going to leave some other get rid of where she don't get there. She said, I only took 45 minutes permission to come and listen to you speak. I need to get back, otherwise I'll lose my job. Uh, frankly, it was it was a very choking moment, right? And I could realize that this is one kid who, who's coming and asking you for help. And that day I realized that if a story impacts you. If something impacts you, you better act on it, otherwise you are not human beings. And I didn't know what to do. So from Madurai, I need to come to Salem for my next talk. It used to happen in a small Kalyana Mandapam here. And it was a pretty long drive. I was there in the car, only the driver was driving. And I was thinking, how can I help this kid? And there came this thought, God has given each one of us a unique strength, a unique talent, right? Uh, he could be good in something, just like how Vijay mentioned beautifully that he could be dyslexic, but he was he, he had his entrepreneurial mindset. I was not good with analytical and logical reasoning. Sorry, but that's how I was conditioned. Mathematics and I are poles apart. Uh, so that way, I was always used to be admonished by my teachers. Oh, you are not good in mathematics. If you are not good in mathematics, you can be nobody in life and, and things like that. But I am a strong believer in the statement that even a stop clock shows the right time twice every day. I'm not, I'm not good at mathematics, but does not mean I'm a zero. So I believe, what am I good at? And I thought I was practically good in public speaking. And I go and speak in very many stages. And if I pull out my phone book, at least 70% of the numbers will be some college chairman or the other, or some school principal or the other. So I said, if I know so many college principal, something prompted me, why can't you just ask for one free seat for this kid? So randomly, I picked up a college chairman's number in Chennai. I called this gentleman and I said, look, I met somebody like this. Uh, I am very, very moved by this girl. I really want to help her. Would you mind giving me one free engineering seat? No? And this has to be completely free. Tuition fees, everything has to be free. Would you mind giving me one free seat? And then I told them, you don't need to give me free. If you give me a seat, I will come and train your college students free of cost. All oh, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, I will come and use The chairman was kind of He said, forget all that. Not one seat, I'm going to give you 20 seats, 20 engineering seats free. You pick up students like this and administer them, put them in my house. Now, when 20 seats came by, I didn't know how to react. So, I had, Archie Banerjee is one of my best buddy, right? So, he used to bounce up a lot of thoughts. We were over a cup of coffee, I said, Balaji, give the seat, put the camera. What do we do? Ah, give the seat, Then he said, okay, come, let's go. He took me to the Big FM studio, gave me a headphone, and said, let's record a show. I said, what show? No, let's record a show. And we did not name it Martram and things like that. We wanted to, the first two years we called ourselves as edu assist, educational assistant, that's all. But I was fairly clear on five guiding principles with which we will run this foundation. Rule number one, we said the first seat, if I have only one seat and I have two kids competing, I said the seat will go to an orphan side. So the first difference in our foundation is for orphan children, number one. <laughs> number two, the second is always to a single parent. No, single father, single mother, but all of them should be economically deprived. They cannot continue ISP. So if a student can apply for a loan, then we don't take them. Not necessarily from government school, we also take students from private school because we realize that even a domestic maid at home is willing to pledge everything to ensure that the kid gets good education. So we did not want to miss out on that opportunity. And guiding principle number four, we said we will never ever reveal the identity of our beneficiaries to the larger audience. Never. So we will not put up pictures of these kids in our website saying this kid is a sponsored student from a master's foundation, right? Uh, because you know what? It is humiliating to the kids. It's humiliating to the kids. I remember my friend in class who used to get the scholarship in college. And every time when a friend gets a scholarship, what do you go and do? Treat for Ramacha. That's what we go and ask him, right? So every time I used to ask him, he also will give me a treat. In the sixth semester, I asked him, 
you must be really proud, isn't it? Every year you go up to Loyola College on stage and you get this free. And he looked at me and he said, why are they giving me this scholarship? One, they are giving me because I am economically deprived. And second, they are giving me a scholarship based on my class. So what is so, so very thinking about it? So as a foundation, we grow a lot of TV channels approached us. Say, we want to do a show about your foundation. I said, brilliant. That more the merrier. And then comes a caveat. Give us that database of your students. We want to go to their home, shoot, um, see, you know, show the mother struggling hard and make people cry. Like a so I said, sorry, thank you very much. So we are not into any of this media business. So with 20 seats we started, and except for the first seat that I went and asked as college chairman, we worked with about 28 different institutions across Tamil Nadu. Not, not a single seat after that we went and asked. These people came forward. College chairman came forward and asked for seats. Now the beauty is, in Tamil, they say, when you have to go and ask help for yourself, if I say, oh, I want to ask help, so give me 500 bucks, you can't go and say, hey, Give me five hundred rupees. You don't ask that way. Your shoulders will droop. There will be a, your voice will suddenly will go and be evil. It's a must. Give me five hundred rupees. But you realize when you ask help for somebody else, who cannot repay it back to you. Tamil there's a word called dambinam, right? And that is what I realized when I asked help for this girl because I, there was no quivering of my voice. There was so much of satisfaction in my voice. There's so much of courage in my voice when I asked help. Now this kid, who whom we first administered as a student of Matram Foundation is passing out in April of 2017. She's campus placed for a robotics firm for a salary of 6.75 lakhs. <laughs> 70 percent of them, of, of them are already placed. We are right now 337 students in our foundations studying across different from the top universities. And we also wanted to tell the world to help somebody you don't really need money. We opened our bank account four months back for the last four years, we ran without a bank account. Because what happens, if somebody is giving you a seat, you are only acting as a bridge to identify the students and placing them. And as HR professionals, all that I need to do is ensure that they are employable. So 10 of us, all working professionals, none of us do this full time, all of us are working professionals, we have our own families to take care, but we ensure that our Saturday and Sunday is spent meaningful. Because I have listened to many lectures of people saying, you know what, I want to study hard, Go work for a global MNC, go abroad, make a lot of money, buy a big house, swanky car, and when I retire, I want to do an NGO. That will never happen, my dear friends. It will never happen. It's a leap of faith. When you see somebody struggling, that two minutes really makes a difference. And when I, I don't know, it's God's will that I named this foundation Martha. And let me, in all humility, tell you this. Not once do I believe that I am changing the life of these students. If I bring three or four of my students to on this stage, you will be moved to tears because it is these kids who change our perception towards life. <laughs> Let me give you a few examples. One awful kid from Kumbakona, from a Vivas family, this kid lost both her parents when she was in UKG. Uh, so we admitted her to a college in Chennai. Uh, so most of these orphan kids, when they study in college hostels, they stay in college hostels, when college hostels close, we realized they don't have a place to go, so they used to come and stay with me in my house. Now we have hired up an office. An office is not a small place. We have hired up a four-bedroom house, out of which two bedrooms are converted into dormitories so that they can come and stay over the weekend. So this kid who is coming from Kumbakonam, I called her and I said, Ella ready for the bus ticket I tell her ticket we said, so I will pick you up from Tamram bus stand tomorrow. And uh, casually I asked her, uh, did you finish your dinner? Sapia, Linda Sapia. And with, with the sweet voice on the other side, she said, Sir, I eat only once a day. I eat only once a day. And during school days, it is lunch because midday meals. That's why we need to be thankful to leaders like Amraj and MGR, right? Kids have gone to school. Kids have just gone to school to have one square meal a day. Studies come secondary. She says, scoring marks was incidental, but it's that one square meal a day which makes the difference. And then now during holidays, I don't take lunch sir, because there's no school. So party gives me two rupees with which I take two idlis in the morning. The next meal comes the next day morning. So through, through the day, she stays hungry. And then she asked me, Sir, Nika Dinda Sapkina, sir. I said, uh, Sapkama, Dinda Sapkina, sir. Chapati Sapkama. Ah, Chapati, ah. Umbo, the master, what is Sapkina, sir? Chapati, for wedding reception. She said that last time I had chapati was nine months back in a wedding reception. And every day I used to curse my wife, 
Madhya Thara, where the Guru Madhya is, right? That is all, life is all about, right? Sulojini is now in third year engineering, ECE, with a CGP of 8.7 out of 10. Ajit Kumar is another classic example, because we do home business. We do home business. We go home, we verify the records, because in Tamil Nadu, anything given free, everybody applies, right? When it's free, even I have seen people with seven shops, a three floor house in Namakal, that is applied saying he's poor because he gets a seat in Satyabama University. Right? So this kid cycles 64 kilometers, my dear friend, 64 kilometers up and down to earn 75 rupees a day to work in a sticker shop. Why? He wants to study engineering, he wants to apply, use that money to pay for his counseling fees. So I met him at 11.15 in the night and I said, Ajit, what I mean, you want to be a computer science engineer, civil engineering, sir. He said, civil engineering. Edith class, civil engineering, sir. We don't know what sir. The same was served, the same was served, sir. The man of Guru Guru, sir. Civil engineering, but sir, that's the Kappa Mark, we didn't get to go to the His only dream is to build a house for his parents. Each one of these stories, my dear friends, makes us realize how blessed we are. And that day, after this famous incident in Madurai, um, Anand was talking about how this apple fell on Newton and why it's a great story. And I want to tell you, how come all life changing moments to these guys happened just like that? Apple fell on uh, Newton and he came with something in science. Buddha got enlightened by sitting under the tree. And then you realize life changing moments happen around us all the time. It's just that we don't see it. We don't, we pay so little attention to it. It happens all the time. And the last part of my story is around this. Just want you to focus your attention towards does this work? Okay, if, if it's possible, can you just switch on the slides, please, so that people can see the screen? These are just some pictures, and through these pictures, I'm going to tell you a story. Are you able to see it? Yeah? Is this a very common sight? This was shot right outside Madras Christian College, Tamaran Railway Station. Right? Yeah, the only difference is she's not begging, she's selling candies. Right? What, what is fighting in this person, in, in this picture? You see a small girl sitting there and studying? Now, this picture was clipped by my housekeeping staff in Infosys. And he clipped it and he showed it to me. Sir, you know, what do you want to do? Right? Housekeeping staff, 7th standard fail. Right? So I walked up to the next day and she was exactly in the same place and she was selling candies. I picked up a conversation and I was shocked to realize that she is a double graduate. Her name is Subhana. And Subhana is a double graduate, BA, BA, and she was doing an MA. One year she has finished and she was in the second year of her MA program. And that's Supriya, her lovely daughter, who's studying in class two. And after doing double degree, she could not find a job. Her husband is also visually challenged. And he gets epileptic fits if the temperature rises to 37 degrees. So to support the family, she decided that she'll go and sell candies. Now this is what if the mother is educated. The mother will go to any extreme to get her kids educated. So she travels with train and that's exactly what Sumana does. So I called Sumana and family to my office. That's, that picture was shot in my office. Realized both, both parents are visually challenged. Vijay wants to be a collector. Supriya wants to be a pediatrician. Both of them go to a corporation school. And I said I wanted to help them. God's will, I earned pretty decent. So I realized I gave him 12,000 rupees that day. And he said, Supriya, Supriya promised me this, that you will not go back to the streets again. I am somebody who believes strongly in the power of social media. I use Facebook for a cause. I don't write, I don't take selfies, I don't say I'm in Satyam theater with my friends. You don't do that, right? You don't suddenly go to a road and if I see madam on the road, madam, how am I looking? You don't ask that, you know? People will find it strange. Uh, why would somebody, and the other day somebody says down with dysentery and somebody says 77 likes for that, you know. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. But I somebody believe that social media can be used for a cause. Something told me that her story will go viral. So I said, do promise me that you will not go back to the streets. Keep this 12,000 rupees and this 12,000 rupees is a challenge for me because by the time this 12,000 rupees gets over, I need to get your job. Otherwise you will be back in your streets. So I wrote about her and the story went viral. People said, I'm willing to help. Some kept on sharing it. Some asked for a bank account. We raised 1.4 lakhs through cash. But knowing fully well that 1.4 lakhs will also get vanished in no time. She will be back to the streets. So two minutes, I'll finish off. Then 
I said, if she is a graduate, why can't we ask somebody to help? So I spoke to the Mahindra World School principal, who is also an advisor to our foundation, and said, ma'am, do you think you can help her? And uh, Mahindra World School, there was an interview which was conducted, and in this interview, uh, four people interviewed her, and not for a job in Mahindra World School. I said, if she is getting selected, you can place her elsewhere, right? One of the questions in the interview was like this. They said, Subhan, I'm going to give you a job. You can speak in Tamil only in the class, but outside the class you have to speak in English. How will you manage? Prompt came the response from Subhan. Ma'am, English is just a language, ma'am. Tamil is a customer. Tamil is a customer. Tamil is a customer. Tamil is a customer. So English I will learn. And for your reference, madam, Tamil is not my mother tongue. I'm a Saurashtra. Right? June 1st, she joined Mahindra World School as a Tamil teacher for a salary of 20,700 rupees. And those two kids from corporation school were also admitted into Mahindra World School. She was a previous school in Chennai. Lot of media wrote about her. That was a lovely article from the Hindu. She suddenly became a superstar. And then this happened last month in 2017. Subhana went on to win the Ability Foundation Mastery Award in just six months' time. Winning a cash prize of 1 lakh and that's the other Ability Foundation awardees. 186 nominations across the country from 23 different states. Subhana was the, only the second person from Tamil Nadu this year to win the Ability Foundation Mastery Award. Look at what this article in the Hindu says. A trade place for women disabled, visually impact teacher who once sold candy at the radio station is now a motivational speaker. I'm training her to be a motivational speaker. She delivered a one hour talk in Infosys. One hour. Talk and Infosys. She went and spoke in CSS Park in Anna University. Okay, probably the next time you guys do a TEDx talk, you should call Suna. <laughs> Look at what Anand Mahindra tweeted about her. When I list that things that make me come to work every day, it is stories like this which are the greatest motivators. The chairman of Mahindra is tweeting about Subuna on his Twitter. This is the picture of Subuna in her office delivering a talk. I just want to conclude with the last picture, my dear friends. See, this is what life is all about. That picture was shot in April 2016, and this picture is that of an Infosys employee taking an autograph from Sumana in my office. <laughs> life comes a full circle. Life comes a full circle, my dear friends. I sincerely urge you. You can be whatever in your corporation, you can be the vice president, you can be whoever you want to be in this large corporation. There is life in the purpose. The life in the purpose is all about can we spend that two minutes to somebody who is suffering on the roads or somebody whom you see. You might not be able to help but you can always refer to somebody else. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity.